There's been a lot of talk recently on the internet about an article that's just come out in uh, peer review form by Margarian et al, which is a study of human genomics in Viking Age Europe. And that sounds like a really long, boring scientific paper title, because this is a scientific paper that looks at the genetic makeup of people in Viking Age Europe. Basically, what it's trying to do is figure out where people from Viking Age graves that we've got were from. So they are taking a huge sample, I think they took more than 400 humans, uh, skeletons of people who've died in the Viking Age, took DNA samples from them and figured out where they're from. Or as close to where they're from as they could manage with the technology available. And it's a really cool, really big, quite groundbreaking study. But a lot of people have been making some really big kind of sweeping <laughs> statements about what it's telling us. And with any kind of study like this, with any academic study, with any scientific study, there always has to be party pooping. And I have come to poop on this party. And that is gross. One of the things that we need to bear in mind is that, as with any other kind of scientific study, this has limits. There are limitations on this data. And if you want a really good breakdown of that, I recommend you follow the link in the description to uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kat Jarman's Twitter thread. Dr. Jarman works over in, I think, Oslo at the new Viking Age Museum over there. She's got a book coming out soon that looks really cool. I've also linked down to the various places where you can l look at reports of this article and you can read the article itself. It is behind a paywall in a lot of places, but that's academia for you. So what does this article tell us to start off with? Well, it tells us some really cool stuff. It tells us that some of the Vikings who were found buried in England were related to each other. Four people found buried all together in, I believe, a boat burial were brothers. So four brothers buried together. And that's a really cool thing. We'd never have known that otherwise. No one wrote anything down about them. There was no gravestone like you get on a modern grave. So it's really cool to know that this is a family grave. That's awesome. That also suggests that this group of four brothers all came to Britain together. Amazing. As Vikings. Super cool. It also tells us things like uh, some of the Scandinavian men who went over to Greenland, I think Greenland or Iceland, took with them, their families, and many of these families included British women. And the archaeology around these women with British DNA is Scandinavian, it's Norse. So these women are wearing Viking clothes and carrying Viking jewellery and that kind of stuff, and being buried in a Viking way. So that's really cool to see. It also tells us that there's a lot of genetic material coming from uh, quite far away, like Southern Europe and the British Isles, into Scandinavia in the Viking period, which is also fascinating. It means that there are lots of people mingling together. This is a more cosmopolitan period in Scandinavia than I think we previously had thought. One of the other major conclusions that it draws is that there was intermarriage between different groups of people. So between the Vikings and the Orcadians in the Orkney Islands, which are here. I can't describe. I'm bad at description. Uh, there's intermarriage between the Norse and the Sami, which has been a big bone of contention for a long time. Did the Sami intermarry with the Norse? Did the Norse avoid the Sami because they thought they were weird, magical northern weirdos? Both, probably. But we've got evidence that they were intermingling a lot with other cultures, with other peoples, and that they were intermarrying and that they were reproducing, which is lovely and fairly obvious, really, which brings me on to the second part of this whole discussion, the poop. So the first poop, that's my poop hand gesture, the first poop is going to be saying that although this is a really big sample of skeletons and, and human remains, a lot of them are difficult to extrapolate big conclusions from. What I mean by that is when you look at the data they use from, say, England, most of that data that they're using is from two mass graves. And that's not typical. So when you're using atypical data, you can't draw conclusions on what is typical from them. So two mass graves isn't how most people were buried. Most people were buried in single inhumations or cremations in this period, depending on the culture. So it's difficult to make conclusions like that. The second poop is also that this doesn't really tell us all that much new. 
it confirms some really cool stuff and it does tell us some new stuff like that big influx of people from the south to Scandinavia, that's really cool. But apart from that, it kind of reinforces things a little that we kind of already knew. Like we knew that the Vikings came over to Britain and they came from a variety of different places. We know that we had Norwegians going to different places to Danes. We know that Viking was an occupation more than it was an identifier of your nationality. Like the Vikings weren't a country, the Vikings were a gang of people who went Viking, effectively. Like, this is stuff that we've known for a while. Like we knew that they were intermarrying with people in Britain because we have written evidence of that and we have a variety of archaeology showing that. The fact that these British women were buried with non-British archaeology isn't really that surprising. We've got lots of people from Viking Age Britain buried with Viking-style artefacts and in Ireland and in the outlying islands and in other parts of Europe. We know the Vikings went all over the place, so that's not really new. There's limitations to what this data can tell us, and some of the magazine articles have been written quite clickbaitily. It's a word now to make you read them and go, oh wow, look at all this amazing new stuff that we now know about the Vikings. And that's great, that's fine if reading any of these uh, magazine articles makes you refreshed in your enthusiasm for studying the Viking Age, then fantastic. And don't get me wrong, this is an awesome study. Like it is mind blowing how big this study is and it's interdisciplinary and it's intercontinental in the people involved in the study and many universities were involved and I want to praise them now in this video by saying congratulations on this study. It is an amazing achievement, but pooping is part of keeping things real for me. So yeah, it's an awesome study and it's really, really cool, but also let's not make too many big sweeping, draw too many big sweeping conclusions just yet. Um, it's also worth pointing out that this article demonstrates how the academic system works because this article was actually written last year and it's only now in the news because it's gone through its peer review process, it's gone through editing processes, it's been rewritten, it's been tweaked. So this goes to show that academics really do put a lot of time and a lot of teamwork into writing these articles. So congratulations to everyone involved on it finally coming out and getting such an amazing reception. That's great stuff. Also, also, uh, the other thing that this article does that is really, really useful for us as reenactors and students of the Viking Age is it pretty much blows out of the water the idea that the Vikings were somehow these pure-blooded, blonde-haired, blue-eyed superhumans that a lot of the racist elements of reenactment and history have tried to use. This basically completely shatters that illusion, which should have been obvious in the first place, but the fact that they were intermarrying with all these different cultures and with all these different peoples and they were traveling to all these different places and people were traveling to them just completely annihilates this conservative, far-right, racist view of the Vikings as this insular, outsider-hating people with bulging muscles and platinum blonde hair. Right, it's just <laughs> not true. Um, so if you have anybody who is trying to prove that they have 100% Viking DNA and, you know, they already know that like their great 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 something grandmother is Spanish, then just shove this article in their face and call them the idiot that they are. Because you go far enough back, we all share various ancestors somewhere, right? We're all related to Charlemagne or Genghis Khan. Um, is it Genghis Khan or Attila the Hun? Whichever one of those had like 50 kids. Editing Jimmy will put it on the screen somewhere, won't you? Yeah, you will. Thanks, Editing Jimmy. So, there we go. That's all I really wanted to say about this article. Um, that's that's just come out and just been available. I'll, I'll put a couple of links in the description so you can read up a little bit more on it, but it's absolutely fascinating to see um, the genetic diversity in the Viking Age. It really, really is. The, the people who were traveling all over Europe, it's absolutely astonishing. So go and have a read of the article. Thank you to everybody who has been subscribing recently. This channel is growing and it's all down to you. Uh, shout out to Catherine Rowley Williams for supporting me on my coffee page. I've promised that I will do shout outs to all the people who support me on coffee in my videos from now on. So, Dilchmarion Catherine, thank you very much, Catherine, Rowley Williams. If you would like to support me on the coffee page, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for 
being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like the video, it, it does help to grow things and get the videos out there and get them seen. So, Dilchen Babyan in my Theto and Will you? Thank you very much once again for watching. My voice went all weird there because I've been doing lots of Gaelic on Duolingo today. So, Tapalev, Tapalev, thank you, Dilch, and uh, Will Amatro. See you next time. You're new. Yes. That's an excellent cat. Good friend. Hello. Let me be your friend. Let me love you. Oh, you're fucked.